Harry Houdini, Plunge Off the Harvard Bridge. Future world-famous escape artist Harry Houdini was born Eric Weiss in Budapest, Hungary in 1874. The family immigrated to the United States in 1878 when he was only four years old and settled in Appleton, Wisconsin, where he later claimed he was born. In the early 1890s, Weiss launched his career as a professional magician and renamed himself Harry Houdini, the first name being a derivative of his childhood nickname, Harry, and the last in homage to the great French magician Jean-Eugène Robert Houdin. His initial act was largely traditional card tricks and he had little success, but he soon began experimenting with escape acts. In 1893, while performing with his brother Theodore at Coney Island as the Brothers Houdini, Houdini met Wilhelmina Beatrice Bess Rahner, then a member of the song and dance act The Floral Sisters. Bess and Houdini married in 1894, with Bess replacing Theodore in the act, which would then become known as the Houdinis. For the rest of Houdini's performing career, Bess worked as his stage assistant. Houdini's big break came in 1899 when he caught the attention of a talented manager, Martin Beck, who was impressed by Houdini's handcuffs tricks. Beck advised Houdini to concentrate on escape acts and booked him on an Orpheum vaudeville circuit. Within months, he was performing at the top vaudeville houses in the country. In 1900, Houdini's manager arranged for a tour of Europe where Houdini's escape artist tricks were a huge success and he became widely known as the Handcuff King. Houdini was a charismatic and confident showman. In each city, to boost his profile, he would arrange some public stunt. In the early days, he was often escaping from local jails or handcuffs put on by police. Later, the stunts became more spectacular. His stage act also progressed from handcuffs and straitjackets to locked water-filled tanks and nailed packing crates. In 1912, his act reached its pinnacle, the Chinese water torture cell, which would be the hallmark of his career. In it, Houdini was suspended by his feet and lowered upside down in a locked glass cabinet filled with water, requiring him to hold his breath for more than three minutes to escape. The performance was so daring and such a crowd pleaser that it remained in his act until his death in 1926. Some speculate that Houdini's death was caused by a McGill University student who repeatedly struck Houdini's abdomen to see if he could really take a punch while Houdini was lying on a couch before a performance in Montreal, but witnesses differ as to the description of those events. Whatever happened, Houdini was definitely suffering from severe stomach pains by mid-afternoon, although he carried on with that evening's show and two more performances the next day. On the train to Detroit, where Houdini was scheduled to begin a two-week run of performances the following day, he was suffering mightily from the pain in his stomach. A worried Bess telegraphed ahead and arranged for a doctor to be standing by their hotel when they arrived. Unfortunately, the train was late, and the Houdinis thus had no time to check into their hotel and headed straight for the theater instead. The doctor finally caught up with Houdini at the theater, examined him in the dressing room, found him to be running a fever 104 degrees. He diagnosed acute appendicitis and proclaimed that Houdini should be taken straight to the hospital by ambulance. Houdini rushed through the show and clearly was not performing well. Before the third act began, he finally decided he could not carry on by himself and had his assistants finish some of his tricks for him. Even then, Houdini would still not seek medical treatment, returning to his hotel before Bess finally threw a tantrum and summoned the hotel physician. The physician called a surgeon who examined Houdini and told him that he must be hospitalized at once. Still, Houdini did not do it, calling his personal physician, Dr. William Stone, back in New York sometime around 3 a.m. Only after the other doctors and talked to Dr. Stone did Houdini finally relent and agree to be taken to the hospital where he underwent surgery to remove his appendix that afternoon, Sunday, October 24th. The surgeon who performed the operation found that Houdini's appendix had ruptured and the magician was suffering from peritonitis. The odds of surviving such an infection in those days before antibiotics were small, but Houdini gamely hung on for another four days before undergoing a second operation on October 28th. He seemed to be recovering by the next day, but on Saturday his condition worsened and the renowned magician escape artist passed away the next day, October 31st, 1926, at age 52. Boston was a regular stop on Houdini's U.S. tours and the New Keith Theater is where Houdini appeared between 1900 and 1917, at least annually. New Hampshire showman Benjamin Franklin Keith owned Keith's New Theater, located in Boston's theater district. It's said he coined the term vaudeville to describe the mixture of specialty acts, such as burlesque comedy and song and dance that his theaters featured. He eventually owned hundreds of theaters across the United States. But Keith's New Theater was one of the first and grandest vaudeville theaters in the U.S. The theater was built in 1894 at a cost of over $600,000, its opening in March of 1895 was widely anticipated. Literally thousands of special guests were invited by Keith to the private viewing of the theater the day before its public opening. 
In a front page story, the Globe praised the exterior of the theater as a scene of loveliness such that Boston has never been privileged to see before. Keith's Theater was an elegant vaudeville house with reserved seats, two shows a day, and an orchestra. It was appointed with 15-foot French mirrors, silver chandeliers, rich carpets, and ushers outfitted in emerald green livery suits with lace shirts. The theater's ventilation system was relatively unique at the time. It employed a 10-foot blower that drew air from the roof, passed it over the heating coils, and forced it down and then up through the chair legs. The temperature was controlled by thermostats, and the air ventilated through the gallery ceiling. It also boasted a state-of-the-art fire control system. Keith seated 3,000 and had standing room for 1,000 more. The proscenium opening was 34 feet square and the stage was 41 feet deep. Ticket prices ranged from 25 cents to 75 cents. The new theater was an instant success and continued to be very profitable for many years. In 1896, the theater showed the first moving pictures ever seen in Boston. Thomas Edison brought his vitascope to the theater and wowed the crowds with several short clips. In 1913, Keats began offering talking pictures. In June 1928, after a final farewell featuring Ethel Barrymore, the B.F. Keith was shuttered, as Keith had built an even larger playhouse, the Keith Memorial Theater, next door at 539 Boylston Street. Keith's new theater had several incarnations after that, as Schubert's Apollo, The Lyric, The Normandy Ballroom, The Normandy Movie Theater, Laugh Movie, Art Movie, and Mirth Movie. It was finally demolished in the early 1950s, and for many years the site simply stood empty as a parking lot. In 2004, much of that parking lot became the stage extension and loading docks for the Opera House. 547 Washington Street still stands and is now a retail store. Even though Houdini regularly packed the house at Keats like everywhere else he went, Houdini still believed in publicity. His 1908 engagement at Keats included several stunts. At the Boston Press Club, after some card tricks, he performed the East Indian Needle Trick. Houdini would swallow 100 needles and about 20 yards of thread with nothing more than a drink of water. After showing his empty mouth to the audience, he reached inside and pulled out every single needle fully threaded together. A hundred members of the Boston Athletic Association watched Houdini escape from a very small glass box, 36 inches by 30 inches by 24 inches, which had been riveted and secured by padlocks. Houdini escaped in 15 minutes. And at Harvard, having arrived with only a blue bathing suit, a color sadly associated with Harvard's rival Yale, Houdini suggested a vote among the 200 students in the crowd. Should he continue his trick wearing the blue bathing suit, or perform the trick with nothing on at all? He performed with nothing on. But by far his most memorable trick that year in Boston was his leap from the Harvard Bridge on April 30th. The event was set for 12.30 on Friday, April 30th. Houdini would have his hands handcuffed behind his back, and then his hands would be chained to a collar placed around his neck. He would then jump from the Harvard Bridge into 16 to 18 feet of cold water. This was all to take place from the Boston side of the bridge. This photo shows a 33-year-old Houdini after local police had secured his chains and handcuffs. The woman behind him is his wife, Bess. After a signal from a tugboat, Houdini leaps into the water with an estimated 20,000 people watching. Before the feat, Houdini announced that he would give a prize for the best picture taken of the event. Several days later, he selected a picture by Lou Haskell of the Boston Globe. Most likely the picture shown here are one very similar. He gave Haskell $10 in return for the negative. By the way, the Boston Embankment and dam construction is underway during this period. The barge you see in the background is part of that dredge and fill operation. After a tense time, Houdini emerges free of the chains and collar. Observers estimate the time of the trick took 31 to 39 seconds, but Houdini estimates, based on his heartbeats, that it took about 40 seconds to emerge. Houdini performed other notable public escapes in Boston also, two of which are shown here. In 1906, Houdini escaped from the Charles Street Jail. After having removed his clothes so that he was totally naked, being moved to another cell, and being bound with leg irons and handcuffs. He appeared 16 minutes later, dressed outside the jail, and ran to Keats for a performance. In 1927, he was hung upside down in a straitjacket outside Keats along the Boston Common, where he escaped in about three minutes. This picture is from the Boston Post. Most attribute Houdini's escape successes to his tremendous strength and an uncanny ability to pick locks. Still, many of his tricks remain a mystery. A plaque on the Harvard Bridge commemorates Houdini's 1908 jump. It is located on the right-hand side of the bridge if you're walking from Boston to Cambridge. It's right near the pedestrian bridge leading down to the Esplanade. The date of the event is noted as May 1st, but the Globe stories clearly mark the event as April 30th. Most of the newspaper stories appeared on the next day, May 1st.